There are definitely times where you don't need to install an e-commerce plugin like WooCommerce to do something simple to sell items online. Today, I'll show you a new addition to dynamic content for Elementor that helps bridge the gap. The new PayPal for Elementor Pro feature adds the ability to easily add PayPal payment options to any form created inside Elementor Pro. Now, before we take a look though, I do just need to let you know that this is a sponsored video by Dynamic Content for Elementor. So I'll be giving you any opinions on anything covered, but if you like what you see and you want to find out more, the link is in the description below. Okay, so that's all the legal stuff out of the way. Let's just get on with the video. So first of all, this is the new feature we're gonna be talking about, the PayPal for Elementor Pro form. And what this does is it gives us the ability to add a new element into our Elementor Pro forms that allows us to process a simple PayPal payment. So we're gonna take a look at how we can implement this. And let me just show you what I've created and then we'll go through and actually recreate this. So this is gonna be an item. You may be thinking, I want to buy it. We can click, go through and take a look at the item itself. So nothing too unusual there. And we get to the bottom, we've got this section that tells us how much it's gonna cost. And we can simply drop in our name, our email address, choose PayPal or direct debit or credit card through PayPal. And once we've chosen our payment method and filled our details in, we can hit confirm purchase. Now, you're not limited to just having name and email. You can drop as many details as you want inside you, any form elements, including hidden form elements. So we can pass that over to the email that's gonna be sent out. Now, because we're using the built-in Elemental Pro form element, we can easily get this to do multiple things, including sending an email out, sending things over to, for example, MailChimp or MailerLite, at which point we could then have an automated sequence that would send out a digital download, for example, and then pull people into a sequence all done using this option inside Dynamic Content for Elementor. So let me show you how we can go about creating something very similar to this. Now there are a couple of parts to what I want to show you, but if you want to skip any of this and just get straight to how you integrate this into the form, use the timestamps in the description just to make your life easy. But if you want to find out how to do all this, set in the custom post type, all those kinds of things, stick with me and I'll show you all that. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to use the free plugin CPT UI and we're going to add in a new post type. We're going to give this a title and we're just going to call this, for example, beers. We're gonna give the plural then, and we're gonna call that beers, and the singular, which will be beer. Next up, we're gonna scroll past all the options until we get to the settings at the bottom, and just make sure we have a couple of things set up correctly. First of all, we need to make sure with it has, has archive, just so we can display the actual archive template, otherwise we wouldn't be allowed to use that. It's up to you then if you wanna set things like hierarchical and so on, where you wanna position the menu. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this supports title, editor, and featured image. I don't need anything else for this example. So once we've done that, we're simply gonna add our post type. That will add that in now to the left-hand side inside our navigation, and we can come in and add our custom fields. So we're gonna add a new field group, and we're just going to call this beer details. We're going to set this to be post type is equal to and our new custom post type, which is going to be beer. And that's the rule set up in this. And now we can just create the fields. Now, because we're already using the featured image, the title and the description as part of WordPress itself, we don't need to add any fields in for those. So I'm going to keep this really, really simple. And we're just going to add one field in and we're just going to call this beer price. And there we go, I'm gonna set this to be a number. Now it has to be set as a number, otherwise this won't work the way you need it to. Okay, so that's everything set up inside there. We can now publish this option and we've created our custom post type. And we've also added in some custom information in the form of the beer price. Now, once we've done that, we need to make sure before we do anything else that we have all our PayPal details set up inside the plugin. Otherwise, we won't see the options that you can see inside here, which is the PayPal and the credit card buttons. Without those, things won't work. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna come over into Elementor, into Dynamic Content, and inside there, we've got all the things like the APIs and so on, and all the settings for the plugin. If we come into APIs, you'll see that we've got PayPal as an option. You can switch this between Sandbox and Live. I'm using the Sandbox one just so we can test things out if I want to. And I'm just gonna drop in my Sandbox client ID and my client secret, save the API, and that is everything done. Obviously, if you were using the Live option, you'd have to put in the relevant Live details. So make sure you have the right options or both inside there if you wanna test things out and then go Live, save the API, and then you are done. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just add a new beer in. So we're going to say add new, and we're just going to give this a title and add some basic details. So we're just going to call this beer kit, 
we'll drop in a basic description. We'll add in a featured image, which is the same one. And then finally, we'll set the price on this. And this is going to be a full kit. So we can say it's $34.99. And we'll publish that. So now we have some content to actually include. So we'll come back out of this and we're then ready to start creating the templates we need for this particular layout. Now we have everything set up. We're ready to start creating the template files that we're going to use for this example. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two template files. We're going to add a new one and this is going to be an archive and that's going to be the archive to list all of our beers in this example. So we're just going to call this beer archive and we'll create our template. Now, normally you create something a little bit more unique inside your, you know, you'd set up your custom loop and things like that. Just for ease, I'm just going to show you to use the built in functions inside Elementor itself. So we're going to skip past these predefined options and we're going to create our own. So we're just going to drag a new widget in. So we're going to come down, we're going to find the posts widget, drag and drop that into here, make a bit of space for this, just adding a bit of margins, top and bottom. Once we've done that, we're going to change the query that's going to display this and also the skins. So we're going to set this to be the cards skin. We'll change the quality of the images to make those just a little bit higher quality. And you can configure this any way that you want to. Like I say, this is more about how you use everything. So let's just hop into the query section. And from there, we're going to make sure that the source is set up correctly. To do that, all we need to do is change the source from posts. And we're going to set this to our custom post type of beers. And that will then show us the beer kit. Now, you might be wondering why am I using the post widget instead of the archive widget? And there's no real reason other than the fact that I think the post widget gives us more control over how things look over the archive widget. So other than that, there's no real big, massive differences. I just prefer this. It gives a bit more control over how things look and things like that. So that being said, let's just hit publish. Everything is in place. We're going to add our condition. And we're going to change this from all archives to only show up for the beer archive, which is our custom post type. We'll hit save and close on there. And that's our first template completed. We can now simply head back into our template section, back into our theme builder. And we're going to create our second template. And this is going to be the single post template. So we're going to hit single post. And from there, we're going to create a new one. So we'll add new. And we're just going to call this single beer template create our template. Now we're going to use one of the predefined layouts on here just for speed, but you could create this from scratch if you want to. And I've got tutorials that will show you how to use all these features in more detail if you're new to working with creating custom post types and things like that. Okay, we're going to keep it really simple and use this option. So we're going to insert this template. We're going to let that install. And we're going to get rid of a couple of things that I don't want on here. So we're going to get rid of this. And we're just going to simply get rid of the comment section at the bottom. I'm going to delete that from there. Okay, so we've got our content set up. If you want to just make sure this all looks the way we need it to, let's head to settings in the bottom corner and change our preview settings to, first of all, display beer. And then second of all, we're going to change this to just type in the word beer. And we're going to use our beer kit. So at least that's going to show us some data that's real and relevant when we're designing things. Okay, so sometimes you might notice that things don't show up the way you expect it to, like the image and so on, but it will show up later on. So don't worry about that. Okay, so what we're interested in doing now is just dropping in the form element. So let's just find the Elemental Pro Forms element, and we're going to drag and drop that underneath this section. So that's just dropped in a form. What we're going to do is going to select it, and we're going to get rid of the message in this example and keep it really simple and just use the name and the email. So with that in place, we're going to do one other thing that I just find it useful to just make sure that all the data is being pulled through correctly. We're going to add a title above this section. We're going to drag and drop that in there. And we're going to change this over and we're going to just add in some dynamic data. So click the dynamic tags option. We're going to scroll right the way down until we get to ACF fields. And inside there, we're going to then click on the wrench icon. We're going to find the field that I want, which is the beer price. We're going to select that, hop to advanced, and we're just going to say buy now at and we're going to put the pound sign in. This just allows me to make sure that everything is displaying the way I need it to. So that we can see the price is being pulled in. So the dynamic data is being pulled in. We know that's all working okay. You can style this as you see fit. Okay. The more important thing though is let's just select the fields we've got inside the actual form element again. And let's just start setting this up. So we can just disable the labels on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to just add in at least one new item. So we're going to say add new. And we're going to choose the type. Now, because we've got dynamic content for Elementor installed, we have some new options inside here. You can see there's quite a few different things. And what we're looking for in this example is PayPal. 
We're going to select that option and you can see that immediately pulls in these two icons or buttons. Now, if you don't see these, that's probably going to say that your API information for either your sandbox or your live account have not been set up correctly. So go back, double check all your details are correct. And if you need to update that information, you can do that inside the settings for dynamic content for Elementor. Providing everything is OK, though, you will see these buttons available to you. So now we can configure exactly the same way we would with any other form element inside the forms section of Elemental Pro. So we can give it labels if we wanted to, if we were displaying labels. You can specify whether it's required, the transaction currency, and so on. Now, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. If you're using the PayPal sandbox, you have to set your transaction currency at US dollars. If you set it to any of the other options, you may find that things don't work the way you expect them to. But this is only inside the sandbox. On the live setup, you can choose whatever transaction currency you want to work with that's native to your country that you're working with. OK, so we're going to leave that as US dollars for this example. Label, we're going to leave that out. Now, the item you can see is currently no name. Now, we need to pass over some dynamic data, and this is where we can start to use the dynamic tags again. So let's just change this, and we're going to just come down and say post title. So we know now that's going to pull in the post title for this particular item. In this case, that would be a kit. But because it's all dynamic, when we create more items, they'll all be updated accordingly. So this is where dynamic tags really do come into their own. So item value, same again, dynamic tags. This time, though, we're going to scroll down until we get to ACF number field. And then we're going to click on the little wrench icon, and we're going to change that key to be a price. And this is why I say earlier on it's important you have to set this up as a numeric field. Item description, I'm going to leave that blank for now, but you could drop in anything you want. If you want to use dynamic data, you could do just that. And the same goes for the SKU code. If you have SKU codes that you associate with the items you want to sell via your site, just set that up dynamically through there. But like I say, you don't have to do this dynamically. If you wanted to just set this up as a one-off on a page manually, you can just fill out all these values by hand, and that information will still be passed over in the same way you would expect it to. Then you've got your order approved message, which again, you can fine tune this if you want to for yourself. And you can configure anything else you want inside there. So that's the basics. We hop over to advanced. You can now set things like up like your ID. So I would prefer to set this up and just call it PayPal just so I know that the ID is then unique. So there we go. There's a short code if we wanted to reference that anywhere else. OK, so let's just drop in the label there and just call that PayPal as well, just so we've got some info inside there. And it names it inside this section. Just makes our lives a little easier. Now, we could, if we wanted to, leave it at this point and not worry about anything else. But we can do a lot more. So if we go down to the actions after submit, you can see currently it's set to email. But if we wanted to add extra actions inside here, we could do that. So if we wanted to link this to MailChimp, we could do. MailerLite, you can do that inside there as well. Loads of options. Now, if you saw my last video on how you can use the PDF feature for signatures, but also how to set up a PDF to be automatically generated as part of dynamic content for Elemental, you could set that up as another action inside you, create your template, and then link all the data up so you can send out a PDF invoice to the purchaser via email. Loads of really cool options. So you can stack these up as you see fit, however you want to. If you want to set a redirect up, you can do that as well. We're going to keep it really simple, though, and just leave the standard email action inside there. If we come to email, you can see there's all fields. So any fields we create inside the form fields element, will be transferred over via the email option. So that's pretty cool to see. We can do all that. So we're going to drop in a little message and say, thank you for your purchase, the details of your order. And then we can have all the details output. OK, so let's just change a few other things. The two, that's perfectly fine. We'll leave that on there. We'll change this to new order via ink. And then you can set up any form information you want. So the reply to, for example, would make more sense to have the email field inside there. The form name, you could set this up to purchase, or you could set it up to dynamic tags, whatever you want to do. You can set all these up as you see fit as well. And there we go. So that's at its basic. We could leave it at that point. And that would be fine if all you're doing was selling one single item. But because we're dynamically generating this, and it could be multiple items, could be hundreds of items, you need to set a couple of other things up. So we're going to come back to our form fields. And we're going to add in a few hidden fields. So we're going to add a first item. We're going to change this from text, and we're going to find the option for hidden. And then we're going to assign this some dynamic data. So we're going to say, first of all, the label is going to be, we're going to do is going to be this label of product. 
come to advanced and inside there the default value we're going to change this over then to the post title which is going to be the title of this particular product and if you want to set the field id we could do that so we could just say let's just keep this really simple we're going to call field underscore product we'll just position that then above and we can duplicate that if we want to and we could just then edit this I'm going to change this from product to price. Advanced, we're going to change this from post title and get rid of that on there. And we use the dynamic tags. I'm going to come down until we find our ACF field. And the same thing again. We're going to set the key inside there to be be a price. And we're going to set our field to be field underscore price. And there we go. So now we've created all the things that we need for this particular setup. You can see. Our email is going to send all those fields over, so any fields we've just created will be included. So now when we click on Publish, we can add our condition, and we're going to say we want to specify this is only going to be used in relation to the single post for beers. So we say beers on there, and there we go. We can say Save and Close, and that's our form pretty much done. Okay, so now we've finished everything up. Let's take a look at this on the front end of the site. So this is our beers section. You can see there's our beer kit. We click to go in there. You can see there's all the details, including the pricing and the form we just created. So now you can choose between PayPal or debit or credit card. So for example, if I choose the debit or credit card, you can see that opens up and asks me to put my details in. Now this is secured inside of PayPal, I believe. Or you can choose the PayPal option and that will then take you over to PayPal itself where you can fill out your details and you are then good to go on your order inside of things. Now, this is a pretty simple example, but knowing how you can work with all the different actions after submit, you could do a lot more with this and create something pretty powerful. Now, obviously, it's not going to rival something like a full e-commerce solution, but not everybody needs to have that. This gives you another option, another set of tools in your toolkit to be able to create online payments and process everything through PayPal quite quickly and easily. So that's how we can use the PayPal form element for Elementor Pro. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far into the video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. And while you're at it, if you like this content, well, why not also hit the subscribe button and slap the bell icon? But if you didn't get value from the video, though, well, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well, too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.